All right, we have a gyro. We'll start right in. See, we have the stability of the gyro. Then, if we make the gyro into a gyro horizon, like Sperry Company pretty much concentrated on, and if this, pretend this is an airplane, and basically this would stay stable. So the airplane moves all around, and basically you would look at an instrument that would be looking at a line across this, which would then represent the gyro the horizon of the Earth. So that allowed us to fly airplanes in clouds and that kind of good stuff. So now also we have a precession, which is just Spin us up again. There are some interesting things about precession. And our whole thing is either we're going to power the precession or we're going to let it be natural, which this one is natural precession. And then we have oscillation of gyros. So now let's just say that we have here precession. Now the interesting thing is if we add weight, if you'll see that that stays stable in a plane, but it goes faster. If I pull that off, it slows it down, if you can see that. So that means that the gyro knows how to accommodate itself to different weight, and instead of spiraling down when you throw the, the weight on, it just goes faster. Take it off and now it's going slower. So it accommodates by going faster but staying in a stable. Now whether that could be called conservation of, of momentum or energy or whatever, I am not real sure. Okay, now we are at looking at the natural precession again, which is basically this. That's natural. Now if we power that precession, then we get a torque. See that torque, which is very powerful. It's on this, right on the axis of the uh, main shaft. So we're powering precession, and that torque coming off there is very, very powerful. This is the, the natural precession, which is what we're seeing here, is is basically this. And it's fast, a little faster, but it's weak. And it goes a long distance for a little change. In other words, we're changing this angle a very small amount, and we get a lot of rotation. So we're, you can see we have a, quite a bit of rotation for just a few degrees of this. So that's a, that speeds it up. And we'll later on see that there's an intervening arc that can be put in this to make this whole thing go linear. And it goes linear at a very fast uh, uh, speed, usually fast speed. So we have many multiples of torque when we power the precession and take the torque off of this spin axis. And that is, could be uh, almost up to a thousand to one. I'll say that sounds extreme. And it's a, this becomes a gearbox that changes its ratio. It actually knows how to change its ratio just from its own uh, sense of forces and sense of motion and the emotion that it's able to apply to its own reaction. So it becomes quite interesting. Now, we have uh, another version of gyroscopic type stuff, which a lot of people got in trouble with, and I don't want to name names, but he's not with us anymore, a man from England, went to the Royal Society, and I worked with him for quite a few years, and a very sharp guy, but he decided to show the bicycle wheel as if it was staying up against gravity. But really it was a torque that went down through his hand, just down through his body actually, 
and that really was misread as anti-gravity. So we really don't have anti-gravity. There are attempts at anti-gravity where you have power precession of two gyros in this, roughly this position, so that you can you actually get see that upward motion. Power precession, you get that upward motion. You put two of these across from each other, and people, they, they can, they'll lift another connection bar in between. And that's called anti-gravity, which it is, but it's a summation of a torque situation. So basically, we really have to just say that this really is a very sophisticated torquing instrument. But then some of the motions become somewhat phenomenal. Like we'll look at this one again. So we basically have the ability to torque itself against, seemingly against gravity. Now if you look at the speed that this is going around, and then we move our support point, and now, unlike what Newton, Mr. Newton has observed, we are going slower when we bring the gyro closer to the pivot point, and faster when it's outside of the pivot point. Now we've lost some spin here, so we're not getting, but that speed is faster than when it's closer. And that sort of goes against, uh, I didn't really have a reluctance to say this, against Mr. Newton's uh, conservation of momentum. So when the big gyro, big daddy gyro, overcomes all the little gyros in these atoms, and basically that's what's happening. So it dominates, it dominates all these little gyros. So Newton needs the little gyros, but here we have a big gyro. Now Newton never saw a gyroscope because he didn't have shafts, he didn't have machining, he had none of these things. And what he came up with without knowing about gyroscopics is phenomenal in his Principia or whatever his book. He just came up with so many things. Now we have a couple other motions that we can look at. And we'll watch how this will go in one direction, and then once it gets to a point that it senses as a reversing point, well, we'll see what happens. So basically, you go through there, and now it goes back. So it's really going in one direction until it's parallel with this plane of motion, and then it goes back. I think is somewhat interesting. Now we have another demonstration of what we call Newton's laws. direction the plane of spin is in. So we got a, basically a perpendicular plane to the axis here. And we spin this one up with our little handy dandy DC motor, battery driven, instead of pulling strings. Now what we're going to look at here is, again, this momentum of speed of radii, radiuses. And if you look at it now, the speed that we're going with it that far out, and we can see that speed. Then we move it a little closer.
and see how much slower it's going. Again, that seems to me to be reversing Newton's laws. It goes slower when it's closer to pivot point and faster when it's away from it. So that's given us our precession, our power precession. And here's another example of the power precession. That when we move this a very few degrees this way, we get a lot of travel this way. So, so you can see that. We can force that up and down. And that becomes a, uh, ultimately a chance to get an oscillation in motion. Now, all we got to do is arrange all the uh, mechanics of this. And here's an instrument that does that. So we have a spindle and an arm. And so we have a satellite type gyro, and we will watch what that does. And we'll see if we can try to make it look like I'm really not doing this. As a famous person in our history said, I'm not a crook. <laughs> All right, sorry about that. <laughs> Basically, this oscillation is a very interesting set of mechanics for, so we can make that go as a, almost like a motor. Now, when we rotate this, see that goes down, then we rotate that way, it goes up. Now that's going down. And that's going up. So every 180 degrees, this wants to go a different direction. So it's, it now sets up an oscillation. That happens to be quite powerful. That is, again, along the axis. It's parallel to this arm, but it still works just through the torque of the arm, no matter where the arms are. So we end up with this ability to oscillate. Now we can make a motor by backfeeding the oscillation. So now we're motorizing this. Or we can just take the oscillation side of it, and I'll try to show that in a little better, with a little better mechanism. We'll see if it works. Or you don't see my hand doing the doing the work, a 90 degree motion which doesn't affect things at 90 degree positions. So, now that's going to go down, that's up, and that's the downside, and that's the upside. Down, up. So, we have that oscillation. Now we have one last gimmick here, which is... Yeah, I think that's my favorite one. <laughs> oh, you like this one? All right. yeah. Oh, that one. Oh, this one. Yeah. Well, it's mine, too, because that, that gets us to operate a crank. You put a connecting rod from here, put it on a crankshaft, eccentric crankshaft, and we can make some power. We can drive a boat, we can drive ships, we can... Uh, and it's, it is powerful. It is very powerful. 